Hi, this is Digital Beers Born. Let's get crazy with some more AP Art history. We're looking at the indigenous Americas, focusing today on North America. I'm going to take a look at a piece that comes from the state of New York called the Lenape Bandolier Bag. Let's start with the content. What we see here is known as a bandolier bag, referring to the way that it's worn. A bandolier is something that's worn from the shoulder across the chest down to the opposite hip. Imagine like the thing that a Chewbacca might wear, like this. Here we see a picture of a man wearing a Lenape bandolier bag, and you can see that the strap comes from the shoulder across the chest and the bag falls down on the opposite hip. Now both the strap and the bag itself are covered with decorative beadwork. And we see ribbons hanging from the bottom as well. Now the flap at the bottom is the bag. There is a pocket that you can open up where you can hold stuff like a purse or a messenger bag perhaps. The context for this, this is made by the Lenape. The Lenape are an indigenous population that lived in places like New York, uh, Delaware, Connecticut, basically all across the northern east coast of the United States. Because of that, they were one of the first groups to make contact with Europeans. And that actually has a big impact on this bag. When we talk about the materials, we'll see that it's a mixture of both indigenous and European materials together. In fact, even the shape of the Lenape bandolier bag is based off of European ammo satchels that the soldiers would wear to keep their ammunition. These bags, however, were typically made by women. Uh, Women would produce the bags, but they were meant to be worn by men. We'll talk about the function and how these were worn for ritual dances, but I think it's worth noting now that these were made by women, but exclusively worn by men. Now, the bag we're looking at was made by a Lenape population in New York. Uh, The Lenape no longer live in this area due to the Indian Removal Act of 1830, which was an order signed by Andrew Jackson to remove indigenous people off of their homeland. The Lenape people were forced to leave places like New York and ended up on reservations in places like Oklahoma. Now, oftentimes when you remove a group from their original homeland, the cultural traditions can be lost. In the case of the Lenape Bandolier Bag, they still continue to produce them today. Let's talk about the form. The material that's used to make a Lenape Bandolier Bag is a number of different things. They use animal hide, which would be a typical material for the indigenous population. But in addition, because of the contact with Europeans, we also see the use of cotton. That's not something that the Lenape used before European contact. This bandolier bag represents a combination of both indigenous and European materials mixed together. Now, the ribbon that we see hanging off the bottom, that's another example of a material that would not have been used by the Lenape before European contact. The Lenape women might have had thin strips of animal hide that they might paint decorative colors, but they would not have had ribbon like we see here. Although when they were introduced to the ribbon, they quickly started to use that as part of their um, own materials in producing the Lenape bandolier bag. Ribbon presented them with a lot more variety in colors and textures, so the the artists that produced these works um, were very much drawn to the use of ribbon. And probably most importantly are the beads. Before European contact, the Lenape did not have beads per se. What they would use are the quills of a porcupine, like this guy. You could take a porcupine quill, you can dye it a number of different colors, and you can soak it in water until it gets pretty soft. They could then weave it through the animal hide to create patterns like this. Now, unfortunately, they didn't tend to hold their color very long, so they wouldn't be very bright, and they would oftentimes fade. If we look at the bandolier bag that we have the example of here, we can see that it's not porcupine quill, but instead small glass beads in a huge variety of colors. 
These small glass beads are something that were carried over by the Europeans and introduced to the Lenape people then. This is not something that would have been used in indigenous work before that. When the Lenape saw these glass beads, they were amazed. Uh, They didn't have anything that had that same kind of reflective quality or that huge variety of bright colors. Now, for the Europeans, these glass beads were practically valueless. They, They were not expensive to produce. They're not something that were treasured by the Europeans, but they were something that were highly valued to the indigenous populations of North America, which led to a lot of unfair trade practices. Um, Populations like the Lenape would trade Europeans vast wealth for glass beads that were really worthless. But with those glass beads, they would decorate their animal hide and cotton bags with a variety of abstract patterns. Now, the function of the bandolier bag, although it does have a pocket on the bottom, it was not really meant for holding or transporting goods, but instead it's something that would be worn by a man during ritual dances. Special dances that were cultural traditions and religious observances, the men would dress up with the Lenape bandolier bag or on occasion too as part of their ceremonial dress. And that is the Lenape Bandolier Bag. 